Welcome to everyone in person and those online who you're not in person, but you're still persons. <laughs> we acknowledge, we want to acknowledge the Wurundjeri, Roy, Wurrung peoples who are the traditional custodians of the land on which we live. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and future. Um, we are recording our service, which later we edit and put up online. And please stay at home if you're feeling unwell anyway. Thanks. I think we've got one sticky today. Thanks for doing that. And you're welcome to wear a mask if you're so choose. In today's service, we're going to start a new series called Teachings of Jesus. As we return back to our reading of Matthew's Gospel. But before we launch into that, let's not jump too quickly out of the joy of Easter. And it might already feel as though it was some time ago, but it was only last week that we were celebrating Easter Sunday with the acclamation he is risen. He's risen indeed. Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive. God fulfilled his great plan that through Jesus' death and resurrection, we have been recreated into his children. Our relationship with God has been renewed. And we are fully open to receive God's Holy Spirit. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we are no longer bound by the guilt and shame of our own sinfulness. That it's not a burden that we need to carry anymore. From God's perspective, you are clean, you are pure use a modern computer language, you're virus free, you're a clean install. So as we begin our service, once again, we draw in gratitude to our creator God. Let me pray. Loving God, while Easter Sunday starts to move away from us, May the message of Easter Sunday never be lost to our hearts and our minds. May this Sunday and every Sunday and every day of the week, Lord, help us to remind us through your spirit of the, of the good news that we carry, that we are free, that we are renewed, that we rejoice in the fact that we believe in a creator God and us and his powerful son now sits beside the father and that through his spirit lives on powerfully in us today in this world. So Lord, as we gather this morning, may that, may your spirit unite us, one in people, one in as a body of Christ. And Lord, may your spirit um, open our hearts and minds to your message, to your love, to the community that we live in as brothers and sisters. Amen. Rob, would you lead us in some worship? Good morning, I'll everyone. Ask you to stand. Okay. Morning, everyone. We'll play some songs um, on this cold Melbourne morning. Um, yeah, that tie into Jesus' teachings uh, on the mountain or on the plain. We'll play through this just so people familiarise themselves. Justice. 
God of justice, Savior to all, who came to rescue the weak and the poor, chose to serve and not be served. Jesus, you have called. the broken we must go stepping forward keep us from just singing move us into action we must go to act justly to act justly every day loving mercy in every way walking Shown us. You have shown us what you require. Freely we receive now, freely we will give. We must go, live to feed the hungry, stand beside the broken. We must go, stepping forward, keep us from just singing, move us into action. We must go. Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up and send us out, Lord. And again. Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up and send us out, Lord. And again. Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up and send us out. One last time. Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up and send us. Fill us up and send us out. Lord. We must go. We must go. Live to feed the hungry. Stand beside the broken. We must go. Stepping forward. Keep us from just singing. Move us into action. We must go.
Now, as we start our new teaching series with Jesus, we then the Sermon of the Mount, which we call in part one. Sermon on the Mount starts with the Beatitudes, which you might remember we actually preached a series on that last year. So I'm relying on the fact that all of you remember the Beatitudes from last year because you might remember the Beatitudes have this kind of rhythm. Blessed in the poor are the poor in spirit for the kingdom of heaven is there. So you've got this two parts, the blessing and then the if you like, the reward or the consequence. So what I've done is I've chopped up the, them all. I've shuffled them all together. And what's going to happen now, Cliff, can you hand out one of these to everyone on this side of the room? Meanwhile, um, would you pass out one of these to everyone on this side of the room? Everyone included. Definitely, Nova, I'm relying on you for this. And um, make sure you all got to have one. For those at home, you just got to um, um, put up with the mayhem that's going to happen here in a minute. Have, have we got, do we need some more? Have we got enough? Everyone got one? Okay. Now, this is what you've got to do. You've got to match your half with the other half. And simply, um, oh, okay. And you might find, take, take anyone? All right. You have there's someone over, there'll be someone over there to match with. All right. So when I say go, You've got to get up and you've got to find the other half of your beatitude. So um, you might, I'll give you a hint. You're looking, if you've got the double arrows, then you're looking, you've got the end. Those have got this shape, you've got the beginning. So pretty much everyone on this side has to find their matching part on that side. Go, go. Am I on? How are we going? Do you need some, do you need some help? All right. Okay, once you've got your pair, come up the front. Once you've got your pair, come up the front so we can help the others. There are some, there are some that are a bit tricky. Oh, you've got them. You're in your pairs? Yeah. Who hasn't got themselves sorted? Okay. There's two of these. Yeah, there's two of those. You should be over there with Lorraine. Okay, what have we got? Here we go. Blessed are those who mourn. 
Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. For they will see. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they will see God. Wow. wow. Over here. Blessed are the merciful. For they will receive mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Oh, wow. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. This is a speculation. <laughs> <laughs> Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You're over this one. You're with Lorraine. This one. Oh, yeah. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. Cousins. Well done. Cousins. Is, oh, there is, is, is kingdom of heaven. Well done. And the last one, when? Blessed are the poor in spirit. But this is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, well, that's right. We've got, we've got a couple there. All right. Thanks, everyone. Return to your seats, please. Thank you. I need a... And I'm looking for a volunteer to actually come and do the reading again in full... Who can come? <sighs> You're being volunteered. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your, rewards great in, your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Thanks, Brian. How blessed do you feel right now? How blessed? Oh, very good. It's a strange word, blessed. Um, I've actually used it a lot um, since moving to West Preston. April and I um, often say it's been a blessing for us to move close to my ageing parents. My mum will be 95 in a couple of weeks and dad will be, nine, will be 92. And my parents' house that I grew up in is literally 150 metres down the road here. And so that being close is a blessing. Also, towards the end of last year, my mum moved into an aged care facility, which is around in Brew Street, a, a further 300 metres from my parents' house, meaning that my dad can walk around and visit mum every day and that has been another blessing 
So, if you ask me how blessed do I feel right now, well, in regards to my parents, I feel very blessed. In the context that I've just described the word blessed, it means fortunate or grateful. And the emotions associated with that are joy and happiness. But recognising that there's actually different areas in our life and it's quite possible therefore to be feeling blessed in one space but not necessarily feeling all that blessed in others. Maybe the question I should have asked was, in what ways do you feel blessed right now? Our scripture today, our scripture today is so famous that it gets its own name, the Beatitudes, the blessings. And it begins this section of Matthew's Gospel called the Sermon on the Mount, a collection of a set of teachings of Jesus that describes characteristics and values that Jesus saw as the expectations of people living out God's kingdom. Interesting, as you'll see over the weeks ahead, the, the teachings cover a range of everyday subjects. Anger, offence, adultery and divorce are just some. Interestingly, he was talking to a first century audience, but here we are 21 centuries later and they're still relevant. And it's from these accounts, these, this Sermon on the Mount, these set of teachings, that Jesus gets this reputation as being a great teacher, even in secular spaces. Gandhi once referred to Jesus as being a great teacher. In Jesus' time, it was the role of the rabbi, the teacher, to interpret the first five books of the, of the Hebrew Bible, what is called the Torah. And by interpret, I mean explain the meaning of the text and turn it into application for the people of the day, to interpret the laws and turn it into what that meant in the day. Over the coming weeks, as we move through the Sermon on the Mount, we're going to see how Jesus reinterpreted the Torah. How Jesus saw God's law and the way it should be applied. And my tip for you as we go through these, this series is that when Jesus taught, he taught more from principle than he did from doctrines and rules. He taught more about the, big, the bigger picture, the values, than he did about the intricacy of what the law was saying. So he wasn't a legalist. In effect, and in a, in a, Jesus was teaching his disciples how to reinterpret the law for the way he saw God's kingdom, he was preparing them, he was teaching them for what they would need to do when he was gone. Now it's called Sermon on the Mount because, as verse 1 describes, when Jesus saw the crowds, 
he went up the mountain and after he sat down, his disciples came to him and he began to speak and taught them. Now, it's pretty obvious that's why it's called Sermon on the Mount. But it might have been that Jesus chose to go up to the mountain for a very practical purpose. Being high and having a crowd, he could speak and his voice would be carried. However, most scholars suspect that there's a much deeper significance to Jesus moving on the mountain, up the mountain. Mountains were the place where God met and spoke with his people. And in particular, it was on Mount Sinai that Moses went up to receive the law, the Torah. And here now is Jesus choosing to go up another mountain, though it's never named in any of the Gospels, to bring a new reinterpretation of the law that Moses and Jesus both went up a mountain is no coincidence. Jesus is passing on God's law. And so, on this mountain, Jesus starts his sermon by identifying nine different characteristics or aspects that people should realise that they are in fact blessed and fortunate. But there's one more important aspect of this word bless that we need to understand. And the, in the original Greek that, that the New Testament is written in, the word is makrios. And while it means blessed and fortunate and good, even happy, it is in the biblical tradition, it is always, always associated with something, with being, receiving God's blessing. It's it, the blessing always comes from God. So, which is important because the implication is that they're not just getting good luck, blessed because they're at the right place at the right time or that fate has somehow favoured them. But they are in fact blessed or fortunate because of the action of God towards them. And despite what they see happening around them or to them, from God's perspective, they're going to realise future blessing at God's instigation. Now this is all context for understanding what we call the Beatitudes, which start the Sermon on the Mount. They say that every good sermon starts with a hook, something that immediately captures the interest of the listeners and holds their attention. Now, I'm not suggesting that Jesus was being deliberately catchy or trying to um, catch the attention of these first century Hebrew Greco Roman audience using the Beatitudes. However, wouldn't it be an amazing way to start the sermon? In the case of the Sermon on the Mount, imagine the impact Jesus would have had by saying, here are nine characteristics that indicate you are favoured or blessed by God. And instead of naming wealth or self-sufficiency or status or importance or strength 
or power or fame. All the characteristics that the religious and the Roman leaders would have enjoyed and valued. He spoke of nine totally contrasting characteristics. For example, what if Jesus started with, blessed are those who are poor in spirit? That is, those who, due to their lack of status or circumstance, had need to put their trust in God. They will experience the joy and happiness of God's kingdom. Imagine if you were the slave or the stable hand or the widow struggling to meet the rising costs of living in a Roman world. And you heard that you were blessed by God because you will receive the advantages of God's kingdom. Imagine hearing Jesus say, if you are mourning the loss of someone or a change of circumstance, or if you are gentle and an unselfish person, or if you're a passionate person, passionate for justice, or if you're the kind of person who shows mercy, or the kind of person who chooses not to be lured in by the sinful things, or a person who is constantly trying to rebuild relationships between people, or you're one of the people suffering abuse because you stuck up for what was right, or you were a person suffering discrimination because of your belief in Jesus. If you were one of these, you are the ones blessed by God. You are the ones, from God's perspective, who are worthy to be comforted in your morning, worthy to, re to be raised above the worldly powers, would see justice fully realised, will in turn receive God's mercy for the mercy you've shown, will know what it means to be reconciled into God's family because of the reconciliation you bring to others, will live in the good place of God's kingdom. Imagine if you were hearing these words from Jesus, or maybe you were hearing them from one of the apostles. Would you be drawn in to the rest of Jesus' sermon? But the main point isn't that Jesus was using a clever very device to grab people's attention. He was spelling out how radically different the values are that God appreciates. Jesus was making what I call the great reversal, inviting people, the marginalised and the hurting, those who were being persecuted or discriminated against, because they were doing the right thing. He was stating that from God's perspective, there is a great reversal that was to occur and is occurring. You're not at the bottom of the heap. You're in fact at the top. You're not left behind. You're invited to the front. You aren't forsaken by God. You are blessed by God. In effect, he was saying, congratulations, be happy. 
There's last, one last point I want to make. I said earlier that my tip was that when Jesus taught the Sermon on the Mount, he didn't prescribe rules, he taught principles. So what is the principle behind the Beatitudes? In God's kingdom, or to put it another way, from God's perspective, those who seek God and follow his ways, they will know and experience God's blessings. In God's kingdom, or to put it another way, from God's perspective, those who seek God and follow his ways will know and experience God's blessings. Now, the Beatitudes weren't written to be an exhaustive list, but an example of how God reaches out to those that choose to follow God's ways. It would be equally right to say, Blessed are those that give a home to the homeless. That they will be welcomed into God's home. Blessed are those that give up their time to serve food to the hungry. They will know the serving hand of God. Blessed are those who get stepped over in a promotion because they are seen to be too ethical or moral. They will be elevated by God. Blessed are those who sacrificially love a neighbour in need. They will know the love of God. How blessed are you? Have you ever thought about it? That you are blessed by God? And if so, how has God blessed you? Your homework this week is to ask yourself each day, how has God blessed me? And don't just think of good circumstances. Think of some of the struggles you are having. Problems at work or home or with certain relationships. And ask yourself the same question. How is God blessing you in that specific situation? I can guarantee you this. This can be one of the greatest life-changing things you can do, is to start to recognise how God blesses you in the good and the bad, in the successes and in the struggle. For starters, you're going to realise you are not alone. That despite whatever circumstance you find yourself in, God is there with you, reaching out and blessing you. Let me pray. Loving God, we thank you that in your kingdom's eyes, in your perspective, it's not the powerful, it's not the mighty, it's the ordinary, it's the marginalised, it's the hurting, it's those people that are poor in spirit and need to put their trust in you that you reach out and meet. And we thank you 
but in every aspect of our life, that is where you want to be, reaching out and meeting us in the very place we find ourselves and bringing your kingdom present in that. So we ask you to guide us this week, help us this week to think about the many ways you bless us in the good, in the bad, in the successes and in the struggles. Amen. We're going to come to a time of prayer. And actually, Rob, can you do that this gratitude song now? This is a new a new song. The attitude, pretty obvious what it's about. What I'd like you to do as this time, let, let, let's just let Rod play it. I would invite you to think about ways in which you can pray for God to bless others, to bring God into the story of others. And hey, Nova, can you come here? Thank you. Would you hand this out to everybody and then maybe grab the pens and textures and hand them out as well? I want to invite people. I want you to write down, write down what it is that you want to bless, what you invite God to bless into, and then I'm going to ask you to bring them and place them in the cross. Slot them into the, the gaps in the material. You'll see how it works. Thanks, Rob. Feel free to sing along if you want. Um, there was a verse that I forgot to send, so it might not be on the slides that I'll sing, but yeah, feel free to sing. It's a pretty simple song. Blessed are the poorest ones. ones for heaven comes to where they are in you in you blessed are the ones who mourn for comfort comes to all who find in you in you so blessed are the ones who call your name Blessed are the ones you go to say For you bless, bless the ones who are pure in heart We will see our God Blessed those who seek will be made right And they will be filled and lifted high shown to them by you, by you. So blessed are the ones who call your name, and blessed are the ones you call to say, for you bless
we were sitting here I thought how blessed we are to be a community together and to be here today both in presence and online and to share this time and I could picture Jesus speaking to all the people that were gathered and I want you to imagine that we are here today gathered as well in Jesus name we're gathered together and another blessing is that Jesus has left us a communion that we might share together his body and blood and remember Jesus and what Jesus did for each and every one of us so as we gather together as a community just picture that we are gathered here in Jesus name receiving his body and his blood together. Many, 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 many years after the event, we can share together. And that was his plan. I'm going to read a short scripture just to bring us 
together into that room on that last night before he was crucified, when he was with his disciples, and we are his disciples. So let's read those words, hear those words, and we'll share in the bread and the juice together. This is from Mark chapter 14, beginning at verse 22. And as they were eating, that was the disciples, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, take, this is my body. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank of it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Let us share that cup and the bread together today. And as we pass the bread, I um, ask that you take it, but keep the cup and we will drink it together. And for those at home, do the same. Take of the bread, but keep the cup and we will drink it together. Can I get a few people to come and um, hand out? Thanks, Ali and Andrew, thank you. Lord, as we are gathered here together in your name, we thank you for your body broken and we thank you for your blood shed for us. As we gather together as a people, may we remember your sacrifice, may we remember your love and may we remember that we are a blessed people, each and every one of us and as a community. We are blessed in your name. And let us drink this juice together in remembrance of him. Amen. Right, um, so come to an end, we're going to. 
invite Rob to just lead us in our last song. And Rob, maybe you can tell us, Rob, why you picked this one. Work it out. Um, Blessed are the peacemakers. Yeah. Uh, please stand. God of faithfulness and blessing, each Easter you rekindle in us our hope. Through the cross and resurrection you have given us the greatest blessing, a renewed and eternal life with you. Your promise was to never leave us or forsake us and because you love us and find us truly worthy, you bless us in our everyday lives every day. May through the power of your spirit within us help us to be your blessing to those you bring in our paths this week. Amen.